the center of medicine is from California Harvey. And this plant is abundantly grown in the area. The whole area is part of Harvey. It is a very high grown plant. So you know about Bollywood because it, it is in Mumbai. There may not be wood there, but in this category, in this track, in Bollywood, definitely there is wood. That is growing in brilliance of that area is all the way to some You know about money plant. Why? Why is it called money plant? Have you ever seen the plant bringing in money to you? Does everyone who grows money plants in the plant? Why do you see the plant? I mentioned that it's a white plant in the plant. It's a double decker plus in latter. It's a double decker plus in latter. It's not a full name. It's a double decker plus in latter. It's not a full name. The full name of is Chomni Bus. O Yam Yanai Omni or Omni Bus. Omni Bus is the full name. And over time, we started calling it Omni Bus. That is part of the word Omni Bus. It is a very big bus. What is that? What is that? It is Omni Bus. Any vehicle that is meant for the public transport. Sir, sir. Yes, okay. Can you call this as a bus? Literally meaning, yes. This is meant for public transport. So, even in a hot area, you can call it a bus. I am not kidding. I am not kidding. Yes. 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 Showing omnibus and their first case. So, what I'm telling here is sometimes we use words without knowing the full meaning or even the full word. This is omnibus. This is omnibus. And it is illustrated as a postal star. Now, this is from Vilnius Genera Plantar. And if we look at the term, Heading, Thai Dynamia, Class 14, Thai Dynamia, and Gymnospermia. You all know the group Gymnospermia. And if you look at the genera listed under Gymnosperm, it is all the genera like Leucons, Hawking, Gymnospermia. So all the labiae genera are listed under the gymnosperm, under the heading gymnosperm. How is it possible? How come Linnaeus mistook Asima as a gymnosperm? There is a link in his mind that the gymnosperm means totally different. If you have learned already, the fruit in Lucas plant or in the Asima plant consists of four nutlets. And this linear twist of those four nutlets has four seeds. And we thought the four seeds are not contained in a ovary, but they are exposed. E. Linnaeus used gymnosperm or we use gymnosperm, the meaning is same. The exposed seeds. Naked seeds. So Linnaeus mistook those four nutlets. Literally, fruit, four fruit nutlets as seeds and he grew under gymnosperm. It was his classification at that time. Now, these are forms. Can you see that he included cycons along with other form, along with phoenix, varasas? Why? Because when the linear is that there is a cycon tree, this picture was taken sometime in 1971 or 72. 
You want to know I'm almost bored. I did a full air and this is Dr. Dan Nicholson who taught me the very basic supply numbers. So anyway, if you look at a psychiatry, it just looks like a farm. But at that time, the linear time, there was nothing known about double fertilization. Not much information about ovary. So, you know, double fertilization, the phenomenon was known only at the end of the 19th century, the beginning of, sorry, at the end of 19th century and the beginning of 20th century. So, we can understand why Linnaeus did the mistake. That's what I, whatever I explain. Now, even a high school student learns about dicotyledon and monocotyledon. Or even in middle school students may be learning about this term, mono and di. Very rarely you use tricotyledon and polycotyledon. Even though we are able to describe a monocotyledon plant is like a grass or a dicotyledon plant is like a circle. Most of us, as you recently did, be a attention. This is not any rocket science. Whatever the literal of me, part of it, part of it. So, so whatever, whatever you spell, you spell, and like, I can't believe that you are a T-Y, T-Y, M, M, V, V, it is a So, so from V, from V, there is a right at the top. Now, please look at the leaves of this plant. It is almost like saucer shape, looking like a bow. There is a cavity on the upper surface. Very large picture. It looks like a saucer, a hollow surface. Not a deep cavity, but still, there is a kind of cavity. This is what the literal meaning of cartilage means. A circular plate having a cavity. Or even if you want to omit circular plates, cartilage literally means cavitas in Latin. Cavity in English. What is cavity? A hollow space. This is what we saw at the upper surface of this leaf. So someone when to someone Many centuries ago, when they saw a cartilage of a seed, it looked like the bowl shaped leaf, and that person gave the term cartilage to that particular plant, and then it became such for all seed structures. When once a name is given, it is accepted whether it, a particular cartilage is in the shape or not, we keep using them. So, what I am emphasizing here is, for centuries people have been using the term dicotyledon and monocotyledon, but literally they didn't know the original meaning. When you say dicot, you literally say two cavities. When you say monocot, you are saying a single cavity. So, next time, I make a joke. Next time you visit a dentist and he says, Oh, your teeth are bad, you have three cavities. Then you may ask him, Do you mean that I have three cartilages? That is, three cavities. Dr. Chavari, you are still hearing me well, right? Yes, yes, sir. Hello? Hi. Yes, sir. Yes, we are. Oh, okay. The sound is okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No problem. Yes, sir. Absolutely all right, sir. Okay. Oh, sir. Here is the default we have planned with the Sayatium inflorescence. You learn it either in your plus two PUC class or in your basic class. And the teacher explains each term represents a single male flower and the ovary in the center represents a single female flower. 
There is no caring center law for that flower. It is a petalus. A sepalus. That's Sciatium as a specialized in flora sacs. Linnaeus thought this is a a petalus bisexual flower. is covered, individual stamen is covered by a tubular peria. Likewise, the ovary has its own tubular peria. This is a clear indication. Since each stamen has its own peria, it's a clear indication that stamen represents a male flower and the ovary represents a female flower. So now, Dr. Chavri explains, names are quite important. Here is Cannabis Sativa, Cannabis Indica. So now, Cannabis Indica is more, more on what you call the marijuana side, whereas Cannabis Sativa is a hemp, a fiber yielding plant. Both have the same chemical, that is hallucination, causing hallucination. Both plants contain cannabis sativa and cannabis indica, but it is more in indica and less in sativa, whereas the sativa has more fiber and indica is less fiber. So in Europe, they were cultivating cannabis sativa mostly for fibers to make clothing because they didn't have cotton, unlike India. The reason I am telling you, in 1972, in USA, in New York, they arrested a person by Mitchell Rothbard and his friends for growing cannabis, which was against the rule at that time, 1972. And he pleaded not guilty, mentioning that he was not growing cannabis indica, but he was just growing cannabis sativa. That is, for ornamental purpose. He was not growing the plant for allusion to get hallucination from the plant. So now there were two leading scientists at that time, Dr. Richard Schultes from Harvard University, a very well-known, famous ethnobotanist, Dr. Arthur Kronquist from New York Botanical Garden. These two people, well, Arthur Kronquist was a world-known plant taxon. These two people, they had two different opinions. Dr. Shrutis recognized two species, the Taiwan for hemp and the Indica for marijuana. This is this thing that they are two separate species and that is only a single species called the Taiwan. So, the New York judge, the New York judge accepted Dr. Francis' suggestion. That he realized that plants for fiber or oil is sativa and plants for marijuana is subspecies indica. So, what I am telling is, about four years later, Trump is changing his mind. But still, it is an ongoing debate. Or the two varieties, two subspecies, or whether it is or opinion is different. But depending upon the law, if it recognizes a single species, and if the person is not allowed to grow, the person might go to jail. If the law recognizes Two varieties or two subspecies, then it is safer for a plant to climb that you are growing a fiber yield. So taxonomy and nomenclature they play a very important role here. I again just going. So now these are the Sateka and Yetika plant. And look at this. 
This is totally from a different plant called Vitex Nicanto. It is a good for unrelated to cannabis, for unrelated. And since the leaf looks similar, the person was, the person was arrested in Texas for growing marijuana. This happened sometime in 1986. And the plot was for identification. And after a thorough examination, I said, no. Now, you have to look at the construction of the sentence. If it is A, E, the verb is going to be singular because we are talking about a single person. Whereas if it is plural nominating, the verb is going to be in plural. So based on the construction of the sentence, you will know whether we are talking about a E ending word as plural nominating or singular ending. Same thing. Instead of US, if we add an I, it becomes plural nominating masculine. Okay, what well, because I got I got so now look here. These are important. Here is here is A ending. You turn you turn so looking at this ending. And looking at this ending, there is feminine there is plural future. What will that get confused? How am I going to know whether this particular word is plural neuter or singular feminine? You have to look at the construction of it. Yes, sir. So now, can you hear me now? Yes, sir, yes. So now, as I was telling, now, species nova, look at the ending here, yay. It is singular. And genus nova, why genus nova? Because genus is in the US spelling. It's a Greek term. And therefore, it is nova. You have ending. It's neuter. Genus is neuter. It's not the US ending. And therefore, it is genus nova. Now, species nova is singular. And speech is no way, A E, it is plural. Now, genus nova is neuter, and the genera nova. So now, this A and D is neuter plural. In species nova, A is feminine singular, whereas in genera nova, it is neuter plural. This is what I was emphasizing. Here, the A and D is feminine singular, whereas here, the A and D is neuter plural. So, depending upon the construction, so when you say genera nova, you are not going to mistake that nova to be singular feminine. Nova is neuter plural. So when you see species nova, you are going to understand 
Yes, here it is feminine singular. Now, as I mentioned, J E N T may be plural or may be singular entity. So in the beginning, everything may be a little confusing, especially for those who have not used. But if you look at these things over and over again, it becomes somewhat easier. It takes a little time. Now, whatever I mentioned, apply to the names above the rank of genus. When I say supra-generic names, it refers to names above the genus. Now, here is Andrea. Masculine. Andrea, feminine, Andrea, neuter. So, please remember, in general, you are sending in general, not always, is going to be masculine, and A ending is usually feminine, and you are ending is usually neuter. So, Andrea, Andrea, Andrea. We mean the same thing, but with different, different genders. If you look, please look at the, the hand of the hand. How you are going to make Andreas into plural form? You remove the U as and add I. Andrea, it becomes masculine plural. Then how you are going to make Andrea? You remove A, A and add A. -E. Andrea, how you are going to make it a new term? Remove you and add a. And. So, this Andrea, which is plural new term, may look like Andrea, feminine symbol, but based on the construction of the sentence, you will understand whether what is a new term plural or what is a feminine symbol. Now, even in the high school class, they teach about the linear classification. One Andrea, born single. Andrea, stable. Single, stable. Di Andrea, two stable. So now, born Andrea, di Andrea. People have been using. I was taught and I was teaching, but I never paid attention. I, although we know, knew the name, I didn't know. I never bothered to know the grammatical status of these names. Then, just last year, I started checking. Then I realized these are neuter plural adjectives. So now you know what is neuter plural. You know what neuter is. You know what plural is. And A and D. Why it is? Why it is not singular? Similar. Why it is neuter plural? But our Whenever you talk about any name above the genus name, any name above the genus name, it is always plural. A family name is plural. The name of an order is plural. The name of a is plural. The name of a tribe is plural. So when you say Rose C, it is plural. Mete C, it is plural. Likewise, when you say Panandria, is a class much above the name, the rank of an order. So it has to be a plural. So there is no confusion here. Manandria, Diandria, Nekandria, whatever. Like sign of IC, the floor of IC, road of IC, so pray of Ida. In all these cases, they are all plural. And Manandria and Diandria, they are plural adjective. Then once you understand that, it is neuter plural. The next thing is, if Manandria and Diandria are plural adjectives, how do you name? Because the name, like your name and my name, they are all nouns. They are all nouns. Each name, each person's name is a noun. Yeah. 
Their famous name is a noun. Their family name is a noun. But what I'm emphasizing here is a name or a need not to be always a noun. It can be an adjective. But for our purpose, we treat the adjective as a noun. What's happening here is the code makes such adjectives as though they are nouns. So we are treating an adjective as a noun for our grammatical purpose. So likewise, Maratriya and Dayatriya, which are neuter plural adjectives, is treated as neuter plural nouns. The same thing goes with cryptogamia. You know, in your birthday class, you learned about all games, fungi, bryophyte, and even zerodophyte because they do not have pollination. So they are called as cryptogamy. Cryptogamy. The full term, Latin or Greek, is cryptogamia. Cryptogamia, that is the gymnosperm and the angiosperm together, wherein pollination takes place. Panera is visible. So, panerogamia and cryptogamia, again, they are neuter plural nouns. So, I explained this to many people just about two years ago. So, never knew that Maharaja and Dayatya were originally neuter plural adjective and now that's for our
somewhat separated from the other nine, but at the base they are all joined. So, when I was a scientific assistant in 1970-74, I made the observation, Linnaeus was wrong. Now we treat the Linnaeus classification, total area comes under Pentandria, Manodalthia, not Diadalthia. So, what I am emphasizing is regardless of the status of a person, anybody can go wrong. The gender of the genus Rus in his species planter, he used both genders, feminine and neuter gender within the genus treatment. So you already know your ending is neuter and A ending is feminine. Look at Rus angustifolia. Rus glabra, Rus javanica, So these two are feminine. Angustifolium is neuter. Rus tomatosum is neuter. Rus lucidum is neuter. So this is the mistake. Why? As I said, anybody can be absent minded at some time. But once it is printed with it can only be corrected in the next edition. So this was the first issue of species plantara. I already mentioned what the family name is. The family name is a plural adjective, but used as a noun. In forming, forming family name, we add the suffix AC which is a plural feminine adjective. Sometimes instead of adding AC, for some families, we also add AE or AJ or EAE or SARE or OSE. These are alternative suffixes added to make family names. I give example. Rosa. Now, this is important. Please look at your hand up. Rosa, A and B. So it is on the left column, feminine. And what is its genitive form? Being singular. So for Rosa, its genitive form is you remove the A and add the A E. It becomes Rose. If Rose, Ras is the stem of the word. What is the stem of a word? The base. The base of a word. For everything, there should be a base. Like a foundation. So in Rosa and in Rose, the foundation of the stem is Ras. And AE is the genitive case in A. Processing case in A. So now, before making the family name, what we do is we find the genitive form and the text. Then we remove the genitive case and use only the stem. The stem is rose, to which AC is added, rose AC. So now, why is rose AC is feminine adjective? Because as I said, yeah. The AC is the plural feminine object. So when you add AC to Ross, the Ross AC becomes a feminine plural object. But for our purpose, since it is a name, we treat it as a plural feminine noun. So whatever be the family name, grammatically, built AC, has to raise it. They are all plural adjectives, not feminine plural adjectives. But for our purpose, we treat them as feminine plural now. Take a card that you are sending, masculine now. Now, look at your hand up. To make it genetic, for everything we are, first thing is, we are making it to the genitive form. Why we have to make 
to the genitive form, you will understand as a proceed further. So, to make it genitive, you remove the U as ending and add I, Akarthi. So, Akarthi is the genitive form of Akartha. Then, in Akarthi, Akar is the stem and I is the genitive case ending. You remove, for our purpose, we do not, we do not need the genetic case ending. The stem is Akka, to which you add AC, Akka AC. This is how family names are derived. But there are a few exceptions to the US ending. Classical names like Malas, Parapa, Britas, Pinas, Pyrus. Quirkus, Tamarindas, like Tamaris. So now, in all these cases, in spite, in spite of the US ending, we are treated as, treated as feminine. Why? As I mentioned earlier, a tree name, if it is classical, a tree name is feminine regardless of its ending. These are all classical tree names. So please bear this in mind. Somebody, some people ask me, why Pinus is not masculine? Because it's a classical tree name. Why Quirtus? Why Pyrus? It is. And why Tamarindus? Tamarindus may not be a classical tree name, but still Linnaeus assigned feminine gender. Indus. Tamar. You know what a tab, you know how a tamarind fruit looks like. So for Europeans, it was the date fruit of India. Tamar is the date fruit. Indus is India. The date fruit of India was called tamarindus. And he assigned the fruit. Here is anacardium for cashew nut. The very UM ending indicates Newton. Now, how you are going to make it genetic? You are going you remove the U up and add I. Anacardi I. So in Anacardi I, Anacardi is the stem and the second I is the genetic case ending, which we do not need. To Anacardi, you add A C to make it Anacardi. So this is how you make family name. First, find the genitive form. Looking at the hand sheet, you can make you can make out the genitive form of many names, and accordingly, you can proceed to make your own family name. If it is, if I am teaching in person, I would have asked everyone to develop some examples. But anyway, this is the basic. Everything is not that easy. There are always some exceptions. Limnathas. Lim in Latin is leg. And it is flower or flower. So plants growing in them. Lake area or lake flower. Stylo, stylus anthus. Stylus means pillar, style, column. Stravila anthus. Stravila, you know what stravila is? Just like uh, a comb or uh, like cycle stravila. Flowers arranged in a cylindrical form. In all these cases, Antis, antis, antis. Now, recently I, I started questioning what is happening here. In Stravaila Antis. So now, the first word in Stravaila. And you already know how to make the genetic form. Remove the US ending and add I. Become Stravaila, the genetic form. In Stravaila, Travail with the step. And 
I use the play setting which you remove, you use the profile. <laughs> and you add the next term and this to make it show my value. That is very clear. So all you found here was in Strobile Anthem, you found the genitive form of the first word and you used the stem of the first word to which you add an artist to make Strobile Anthem. But when you come to stylus, uh, stylus artist, what is happening here? Stylus is a full term and artist is also a full term. You didn't find, or rather, we didn't find the genitive form. We are not using the stem of the genitive form. We are using the full term, style of, without any change. So, what is happening here? It's not, you need little more grammatical expertise. In Greek, anthos is flower, anthos is in Latin. Antios is the genitive form and anthos is the stem. Anthos in Greek is flower, antios is the genitive form and anthos is the stem. So, what is happening is in Strobile anthos, we used the stem of the first word and combined the next word. Whereas in stylosanthes, we are using the stem of the second word, adding to the full word of the first word. This is one explanation, whether given to me, because Thanks. I know some basic uh, rules and regulation, but I am not an expert in Latin. I am not an expert in Latin and Greek grammar. I know only the basics. So this is the explanation given. When in Stravailanthes. The second word remains the same, whereas we use the stem of the first word. Whereas in Styler Sartis, we use the stem of the second word and retake the full first word. It may be a correct explanation or it may not be. If I find out something else, I'll inform you. In Yimna, Again, it's quite interesting. Limni, like Nimbus, is the genitive form, and again, Limni is the stem. But if you look at over, over drop, and the same thing is continued. So that's why in Limna, the E is gone, and it's complicated. But if one keeps studying, uh, it becomes somewhat easy. Capacity is the alternative name for hashtag. How is it form? Form means together. Post means arrangement. Posita and the generative form is. Positive and stem is posit, com plus posit, the stem. So this is your AE. In the very beginning itself, I mentioned in AC, you can have some other suffix like AE, EAE, AT, Fere. You can not add all these things as alternative suffixes. So for composite, we add AD to make composite. The alternative name for hash AC. The alternative name for brassic AC is crucifere, cross bearing. Fer means bearing. So now, the Latin crux is cross. Its genitive form is crucis. And the stem is crack. I is the so now crack and add fere. But we are adding I as a connecting vowel. So whenever we are adding the stem of the first word plus the second word, if the second word starts with a consonant, 
not a vowel, but a consonant, then we add an I. When we added cop plus O, cop is a prefix, posit plus A E, the suffix A E is not with a vowel, so no I is here. So it became composite A. Whereas if correct and fare, fare is start with a F, which is, which is a consonant, not with a vowel, so that's why we added I to make Pursi Pere. Graman is Ras in Latin. Graman is the genitive form. Graman is the stem to which we add EAE. -E. Here we add an EAE, -E. here we are adding EAE, -E. again a convention and Graman A. Since E start with E, E is a vowel, no connecting vowel I is needed. Pifere, alternative name for Kulusiyasi, the same thing, like Gata is the extract, the, the exudation, a kind of drop, and Gata, Gatte, Gat, and since Fere starts with F, a consonant, so I is added to make Gattifere. So now A, B, F, Lib, is neuter, term you add I, A, B, I, within you have the step A, B, plus A, T, A, B, A, T. Leguman, this is the, the, the legume fruit, Latin is leguman, leguminis, wherein legumin is the stem, we add wasai, wasai is again plural in plenty, leguminis say. Pame, so, Ambalifere, Ambala, Ambale, wherein Ambal is the stem, Fere, so you add an I, Ambalifere. So now, these are the conventions and presently these alternative family names are gradually fading out. Only people of my age are still aware of these family names. But anyway, I have given how these family names are derived. For everything, first you need to find the genitive form of the particular first term. Usually the first term. Very rarely the second term. Usually the first term. Use the term of the first term and add it to the second term. And if the second term does not start with a vowel, add I as a connecting vowel if it is not or add O. If it is as a connecting vowel for Greek terms. Now, it is not always easy to find the genitive form if the name ends with IS. Now, cannabis. Earlier I mentioned about cannabis plant, cannabis satayvan, cannabis indica. Cannabis, the genus name is ending with IS. What is its genitive form? Based on the genitive form, you can make the, you have, you have to use the stem and add a T. In 20th century, in the beginning and 19th century, there are five family names derived from cannabis. So there are five family names. Why? How come? So because different scholars they found different genitive forms of cannabis. And who is right and who is wrong? Now, most botanists in in the late 20th century and the 21st century, most botany, they do not know much about Latin and Greek grammar. Those days are gone. Even those who know, they have, they have only limited knowledge. But in the 19th century and the earlier, the early part of the 20th century, people knew Latin and Greek grammar quite well. And the scholars, they differ on the genetic form of cannabis. And finally, the court settled for 
cannabis, the generative form is cannabis itself. That is the nominative form. What is nominative form? The name. Your name is the nominative form. My name is the nominative form. The nominative form and the genetic form are the same. In the nominative of the genetic form are the same. So the genetic form, if this acts as cannabis, a cursor is in cannabis, if this is the genetic form, we remove we remove the IS, retain cannabis, to which we add casein to make it cannabis. This is how the code in 1961 said the botanical. Prior to that, there were five different family names, all derived from genus cannabis. Now, the genus Caparis. It was debated whether the family name is Caparidaceae or Caparis. Again, what is the genitive form of Caparis? Some said the genitive form is Caparidis. And if the genitive form is Caparidis, then the family name is Caparidaceae is correct. But if the genetic form is Caparis itself, there is no change, then the family name Caparis is correct. Who is correct and who is wrong? Eminent scholars up to the middle of the 20th century, they were using in both forms, Caparidaceae and Caparis. I repeat again, the genetic form of Caparis may be Caparis itself, or it may be comparedis. If it is comparedis, then the family name is comparedaceae. If it is comparedis itself, then the family name is comparedaceae. Finally, in 1961, the botanical court settled, well, the accepted name is comparedis. So some people are not happy about it. But they have to go with the majority. Now, as I keep telling, with the highest setting, it may be or may not be straightforward about its genetic form. You know the grape genus Whitings. It is the name of the genus, nominative, and it's also genetic, same ending. Whitings is nominative as well as genitive. If it is genitive, what do you do? You remove the IS ending, add AC, you get white AC. So it may be used as a genus name or it may be used as the genitive form and from which you derive the family white AC. Now, sometimes the IS ending genitive form is different. Look at the genus name Amaryllis. Look at the orchid genus name Orchis. Axalis. The firm series. In Amaryllis, its genitive form is Amaryllidis. And Amaryllid is the stem to which you add AC to become Amaryllidase. Likewise, Orchis. The genitive form is Orchidis. And orchid is the stem to which you add AC to become orchid AC. Axal is the same thing. Axal it is, then you get axal it is. Theories, the same thing, you get third AC. And eventually, third of pinna. This is how you have to make third AC, theories, and then third of pinna. Now, the moment you know third is the stem, Phyta is the second term. Therid and Phyta both Greek, Greek origin. That's why the connecting vowel here is O. Therido Phyta. Zyris, Zyridis. Hydrocharitis. For here, the genitive form is Hydrocharitis. 
and hydrocharic is the stuff to which you are high. So suddenly you see a different genetic form, ITs, and you get hydrocharic. So what I mean, it's the highest setting. What need to know little bit grammar to find out its genetic form, but by usage you learn it. There may not be any change in the genetic form as in YTs, or it may be adding IDs, or it may be adding IDs. Sometimes, if the genus may ending in O, like Porago, its genetic form is Poragenes. And Poragen is the stem to which we are AC to make it Poragenesi. Likewise, Plumbago, Plumbagenes is the genetic form, and Plumbagen is the stem to which we are AC Plumbagenesi. But some generic names ending with AS, like Asplias. Now, but AS ending generic name. The genetic suffix is Addis. This is the Asclepiadis. It's a genetic form. And Asclepiad is the stuff to which you add AC to make Asclepiadis. Likewise for Psychas. Its genetic form is Psychadis. And the stem is Psychad to which you add AC to make it, to make it Psychadis. So now, as I mentioned earlier, before connecting your world with another world, or before making your family name, you need to find out the genetic form. Without finding the genetic form, you may not, you cannot make the correct family name. So unless you know, for psychics, the genetic form is psychotics, you are not going to get the family name psychotics. Likewise, unless you know for axalis, the genetic form is axalis, you are not going to get axalis. Likewise, for teris, unless you know the genetic form is teridis, you are not going to get division period of my task. Unless you know that for barago, the genetic form is baraginis, you are not going to know how baraginis must be right. Again, this is not a rocket science. You need little practice and when you become a master over time. Nobody can become a master in a single day. It takes a little time. But this is not a rocket science. This is not a complicated procedure. Now, even in the, in the past, even very eminent botanists have uh, made mistakes for our present standard. Okay. Now, generic names derived from Greek language with the, with the R ending, M A. It may be neuter or it may be feminine. One need to know the language. Now, when we say melastoma, geobroma, Arbostema, Hydrostema, Alisma. Every word ending, you know what stoma is. Cap, mom, company. In all these cases, the terms are neuter. But as feminine ending, like Hidioma, Miliosma, Nama, Glicoma, all this is MA ending, but they are feminine. So one need to know. One need to be familiar with the usage of this term, Greek language. Now, I already mentioned, for our present standard, Arthostema is neuter. So one should not mistake the A ending, it is M A A D. In all the examples I give, it is M A ending, not A ending. So M A ending in Greek may be neuter or may be feminine. So, instead of using Argostema as neuter, Wallach, 
in a Nathaniel Wallach's Martin story, British Road. He used it as feminine, Argos Sema, Sarmanta Osa. White and Arda, other two British botanists. Hedros Sema, Tanjur and Sis, feminine. Lasio Stoma, Doranti Folia, feminine by Delta. Melastoma Malabatrika, feminine by lineage. So all these very eminent bodies for our present standards did a mistake. Uh, practically, yes, why it's to what we consider I keep telling about Spermatophyta. 
If you are a student, this is top. Sperma is seed in Latin. And you found the genetic form, which is spermatic, and you found the stem, which is sperma. You add it to phyta, and since phyta, the bee doesn't start, it's not a woven, you add more spermatoma. Full of leaf in tree. And so now, this I didn't explain, but this, I explained about US and UM and A in, in Latin. So, full on, full is the masculine genetic form. Very. Full is the step. And to which you add actors. And you can see, A is a vowel. Philanthas. You don't need a connecting vowel. Philanthas, and it's, this is in Greek, and answers in Latin. So, you add a sutra, Philan and Anthas. Put up, you use the stem of Philan, and you use the full term Anthas, which becomes Anthas in Latin. So this is how you make compound terms. Step of the first word, connecting vowel, I or O, depending upon the language, Latin or Greek, and usually the full term. Now, even though names have been used for more than 2,000 years or 3,000 years, 5,000 years. So now, for Indian civilization, let us say more than 10,000 years or 20,000 years, whatever. For, for our purpose, for all vascular plants and moss, sorry, liver world and sphagnum. It's 1753. Moss plant excluding spagnes in 1801. For algae, mostly it is 1753. Both. But we exclude Nastakesi. This means Hidagoniasi. Why so? Even though they are all algae or algae, why they have different starting dates? Because of the botanical literature that are available quite well. Quality botanical literature on these groups started only the relevant date. And the author specialist in these groups, Hidogon AC, Desmates, and Rasta KC, they suggested we do not want 1753 as the starting date for these groups. Let us start with 1900 for Hidogon AC and Desmates 1848, Rasta KC 1886. And the rest of the, the botanical community, they accept it. And so anyway, all gay for the most part, including diatoms, it is 1753. But these are the three special groups that have different things. In prayer fights, sphagnum, sphagnum start with 1753, but the other mass only from 1801. Fossils excluding all the, the, the diatom fossils, it is 1820. This is how the fossil special is marked. Now, as Dr. Chavre already explained, what is the correct name when there are multiple names available? Like Eskunst 1753, Arya 1754, Microtysis 1834, Calotysis 1834, they are all merged together as a single genus. Then we accept Esculus as the correct name for all the four names. Then what are the criteria for merit publication? So now from 1753 onward, it need to be an effective publication in the form of a journal or it could, be a, it could be an online publication from 2012. 
the person who accept the name the person who publishes the name must accept you should not say i am publishing this name professionally for the future no you have to accept i am accepting it now then it needs a description from 1753 to 1934 the description in any language is accepted from what i know i do not believe any indian botanist published any indian any new species in with a description in the indian language whether it was in english or it was in latin but i am not aware of any indian species with the indian language description if there is anyone please let me know i am not aware but japanese used it maybe chinese but i know that japanese they describe new species in japanese language then all the europeans did in their own mother tongue besides latin spoken in some are spoken in italy so any language was accepted during 1935 to 2011 there must be a diagnosis or description in latin and from 2012 onwards it can be latin or english but not in any other language a diagnosis diagnosis or description must be given in one of these two languages the person wants it to be given in both then type citation so every plant name is linked to a particular specimen but this criterion is mandated only from 1958 onward prior to 1958 people could have published names without citing any specimen any collection it was allowed but not from 1958 onward a single collection was decided and from 1990 onward a yes, single specimen must be cited as polytype or type and the name of the herbarium where it is located prior to 2007 even an illustration was accepted as type but after from 2000 onward yes yeah, type cannot be an illustration so these are the requirements prior to 2000 people used to publish their their photographs and publish their new name but it is not allowed now if you publish a name in french now it is going to be invalid if you have published a name in english in 2010 it is invalid so there are these are the various requirements prior to 1952 i didn't mention it yet prior to 1952 if you distribute herbarium specimen and if you put some description printed description not handwritten printed description on the label and circulate it it is acceptable as an effective publication prior to again 1953 not right prior to 1953 again if you publish a new species in a newspaper it was acceptable as an effective publication so there are so many requirements depending upon the time and things keep changing now if you publish a new species in a newspaper it is invalid if you publish a new species on a herbarium specimen label it is invalid so one need to follow the rules and regulations laid down by the court now i as i already mentioned prior to 2007 an illustration was accepted as a type but not from 2007 or now how english grammar and melodicity may play a role in now for the genus ponophyta please read it is miss embryanthemum section minima 
proves to be a genus, the name Bona of Python would be A. So there is a section name published and the author is telling if this proves to be a genus, the genus name would be Bona of Python. Read the second paragraph, Crippis Santa. If one unites the genus Lagoferis with Crippis, the plant has to be named Crippis Santa. So look at it. In both, in both examples, the sentence starts with E. If the second example, if one unites, has to be named, unites, it is the present, see it's called, in grammar it's called simple present. Whereas in the first example, would be apt, it's called, the, in grammar it's called simple future. See the difference, simple future and simple present. Even though both sentences start with E, in the second example, the name is accepted, accepted as a valid name because there is no condition. So now, one need to know, even though you think that you know English grammar quite well, please check the grammar book or online. There are, there are conditional classes, conditional sentences, zero condition, condition one, condition two, like that. There are different kinds of conditional sentences. As long as it is zero condition, then the proposed name is valid. Since it is simple feature in the two words, if one unites, unites is simple present, has to be named is simple present. Therefore, there is no condition and the new combination creepy santa is bad. Whereas, in this case, proves is simple present, whereas would be up is simple feature. They are in two different categories, simple present and simple feature. For that reason, the condition applies in. So in other words, Bona Fita was proposed as a provisional name for the feature. Therefore, it is invalid. The beginning I did mention, an author need to accept a name for validity. In this case, he was the author was power, was prodi, was proposing for the feature, which is a provisional name. I assume the English grammar was made clear to you. The difference between simple feature and simple present in its sentence. Then there are different kinds. So now, what is a correct name? Like, if you accept Michaelia Champaka as a correct name, okay. If you accept Magnolia Champaka as a correct name, it's working. Why working for Magnolia? It is referring to the same, same plan. Now, I'm going to. To be a correct name, the name has to be a valid. A valid name as a time. It, a valid name may be legitimate or illegitimate. Even today, many professors commit the mistake of treating invalid names as illegitimate names. No, it's wrong. Names are valid names. They have times. When we come to invalid name,
simply by a committee. A single person cannot, he or she cannot change the name on his or her own. The committee needs to approve it. There is a very interesting case. Infra family name. Infra family name usually ends with IDA, like Roth IDA. It's a sub-family name. If it is a tribe, instead of adding IDA, we add EAE, Roth EAE. And if it is a sub-tribe, we add INAE, Roth E name. So far. Here are two tribe names that I mentioned. Tribe Morier, published by Britton and Rose in 1930. And Tribe Morier, published by Dumar Shears in 1829. Identical tribe names, Morier. One published in 1829, another published in 1930. Are they they are homonyms, it's clear. Published by Britain and Rose in 1930. And since they are published at different dates, is the second name illegitimate? The answer is no. Why no? And look at the derivation. Britain and Rose in 1930, based on the genus Mora, Mora is ending with the letter A a feminine nominative singular case and the genetic form is morena by this time I, I believe you understand more you delete a add a to make it more and the stem is more to the stem you add the tribe in the ea -E to make more a that's what britain and wrote then the more 1829, he used the genus name Boris. And by, by this, now you know, to make it genitive, you delete US and add I more E. And more is the stem to which you add EAE, -E, more EA. So more EA was derived by Dumartius for a Morris, and more EA was derived by Britain and Rose for a moron. Two different generic names. It so happened that even though the genitive forms are different, for Mora the genitive form is more A, for Morris the genitive form is more A. Genitive forms are different, but stem is the same. And the sizes, we need to add the same suffix and they ended up being the same name, but referring to two different groups. According to the code, according to the code, now these are not, these are not, uh, there is no illegitimacy, even though there is homonymy, the latter homonymy is not illegitimate. So the code made a rule like that and we follow. Now, earlier I did mention about Strobilanthus. For our present standard, all antis ending names are feminine. For our present standard. But if you look at the floor of British India, Clark used Strobilanthus accuminatus, US ending, Hainianus, US ending. Omnifolius, US ending, viscosus, US ending, as masculine. Now, for our present standard, corpus is masculine. As per the poem, corpus, corpus is masculine. If you look at poor of British India, he brought, treated, Idimo corpus aromatica, obrata, pedicellata, villosa, all feminine. See the difference. For our present standard, antis 
is feminine, but Clark treated them as masculine. For our present standard, corpus is masculine, but Clark treated them as feminine. Why did that? The knowledge, grammatical knowledge of Latin and Greek of Clark is much higher than what we do, but we made our own role and applied to the past. Look at Hooker. I put the term error in quote. Blow fighter sensitive on. You are mending, it's Newton. But look at the vital name. Nervifolia, feminine. Proton carditis, masculine. Clabosa, feminine. Erasium umbilata, neuter. Lanceolata, feminine. Maximum sanctum, neuter. Ipsita, feminine. Polygon, lepasipodia. Rubus, nivius. Maximum, microcarpa, feminine. Hooker, Exocom, neuter. But clock, exocom, axillary, neuter, but variety, pentamera, feminine. Travancorica is feminine. Tylosa, feminine. Macaracanta, feminine. So now, why these eminent bodies, hooker and clock, they treated the varietal names as feminine, when the species name is masculine or neuter. So now, that aspect I didn't know. I thought simply there was an error on the part. Then Dr. Peter Raven communicated to me, stating, it was a convention in the past, convention in 18th and 19th centuries, to treat varietal names as feminine. So even though the species name is masculine or neuter, the varietal name was treated as feminine, not by all botanists, but by many botanists, and there was no code to govern, to administer any rule at that time. So what they did was a practice at that time. And we keep correcting all such names, like whatever treated as feminine in masculine and feminine, sorry, masculine and neuter species name, we correct them to match the gender of the species name. Sometimes the code keeps changing. If you look at the Berlin code in 1988, Hungamia, the author is meant in that, and it was conserved in, the, the published in 1803, it's a conserved name. Type is, Pongami and Clapra. There was another genus named Ponga by Adansa, published in 1763. Pongamia and Pongam refer to the same plant, same plant, but the types are different for the genus name Pongamia and Glaraba, whereas here Darbergia arborea. There was another genus named Terris published by Lurairo in 1790, for which some people cited Pongamia as a synonym, because even though Pongamia is a conserved name, its priority is only from 1803, whereas there is a, also a conserved name, but the priority is from 1790. Then later on, the code changed. In the 1994 name, the Ponga Adansa was changed to Pongamia Adansa. See, what was Ponga became Pongamia. Went in and this publication disappeared. We do not consider he as the author anymore. So prior to 1994, we considered Maintenance as the author and the date as 1803, but from 1994 we consider Adanson as the author and the date as 1763. We ignore Punga, we just ignore it. We say what was published as Pungam 
the character to Punga. And what was Dal Bhagya or Bodhi at that time? Now it became Punga Mia Pandita at that time. So now the code changed for, for better, for something better. But anyway, unless one knows the history, how it was before 94 and now one will not, one may get confused reading the old books and the present books. So whatever I think of, I explain. Now, even though Pungamia is a conserved name dating from 1763, and there is another genus name called Militia, published in 1834, which is also a conserved name. Between these two, Pongamia and Militia, Pongamia is priority, Militia doesn't have priority. But somebody made a proposal to include Pongamia as a synonym and it was accepted. So even though Militia does, date is dated 1834, it is treated as having priority over Pongamia published in 1763. So how is this possible? Somebody made a proposal and it was accepted by the court committee. The majority, I am a court committee member, the Westward plan. So majority of us, if we accept, then it is alone. Dr. Paramjit Singh from BSI, he is, he is also the court committee. Hello. Authorship citation. So, just for clarity, we cite an author, an author for each plant name. So here is Pignonia adenophylla, published by Wallet in 1832, but it was an invalid name. There was no description. He just gave the name. Then George Don in 1837, he gave a description and he still cited Wallet as the author. But the name came from Wallet. But the description was provided by George Dow. And for us, the person who accepts that name and give a description is important. And we put the term EX. The term EX means according to Latin. EX means according to. According to George Dow, Swalik is the author. But for our purpose, both are authors. And the important person here is George Town, not Wallik. You may cite the name Piknonia Adinokilla, Wallik EX, Town, 1837, or you may merely say Piknonia Adinokilla, Town, 1837. Because the person who provided the description is important. Here is interest. Here is Andrographis Pitomiae. CB Club provided the name as well as the description. And it was a book for a British India edited by J.D. Hooker. So we merely say in J.D. Hooker. In anything that comes after him is not important. If you are citing the name, you may say Andrograph is Bedomia CB Clark. You need not to say CB Clark in J.D. Hooker. No need. If you're just citing the name, you have to stop with CB Club. Only when you are providing the complete bibliography, then you say, in J.D. Hooker for a petition. Whereas in the second case, the previous case, Wallach did not provide description. So if you want to cite full authorship, Wallach EX is important. Or if you don't like, omit Wallach at EX, merely cite G down. Here is an interesting case. Pancheria Amborciana. Gulamin in 1964. He provided a Latin description, but he did not cite a type. I mentioned that from 1958 onward, all names must have type. So for a 64 name, there was no type. So the name is invalid. Then in 2009, Hopkins and Bradford, they cited a polar type for Panchiria Apalshia. So the name became valid in 2009. 
originally proposed in 1964. Now, who are the authors? Even though it was the name was Valiant in Hopkins and Bradford, who provided the time, the whole time, they are not the authors of the name. Gulamin continues to be the author. It is in authorship. You may ask me, what is this? Gulamin published invalidly. Valich published invalidly, so we are adding EX authorship here. And Gulamin published invalidly, but we do not add EX authorship, we are adding in authorship. Why is so? Valich did not provide a description, whereas Gulamin provided a description. Even though Hopkins and Bradford gave a time, the court considered provision of the description is more important than the type citation. Both are needed, but type citation is secondary and that inscription is the primary. For this reason, this is how the code operates. It is not my opinion or another person's opinion, the majority opinion, the committee. So, for that reason, Gulamin continues to be the author. Only thing is, we have to say, in Hopkins and Bradford. Several people, they, several Indian botanists have contacted me, oh, sir, the particular name is invalid uh, because of the type citation, wrongly cited, whether they could go ahead and validate it. I said, yes, please do, but you will not be the author of the plant name. The person who published invalidly will continue to be the author. Then the present botanist come somewhat confused and then unhappy. If they are validating name, why they are not the author? I said, well, you are doing an academic voluntary work. As per the code, the primary thing is the description. What you are doing is secondary thing. And therefore, you will be only part of in authorship, which is not essential. You are not part of EX authorship. There is no need for it. Now, whenever we use personal name in epithet formation, what is the what is the rule? If it is an Indian name like Narasimha, Narasimha name the ending letter N, it is a constant name. It is not a vowel. So, whenever a name ends, ends in a consonant, not in a vowel, the, st the stem of the word, the whole thing is a stem, Narasimhan is a stem, it needs to be extended, augmented. So, what we do is, we add I to extend the stem, stem augmentation. Then we add the second I to make it male genetic. So, why we had added two I to Narasimhan? The first I is making the stem extended. Because the stem is ending in a non vowel. And then you add the second I to make it male genetic. Here is an English name, Margaret. T is not a vowel. It is a consonant. So you have to extend the stem by adding I. Whether it's a male Narasimhan or female Margaret, you add I in both cases. Then you add a second I to make it male genitive, but you add AE to make it female genitive. Margaret A. So this is the role. If we take the Indian name Raju, ending the U is a vowel. So you need not to extend the stuff, you merely add I to make it male genitive. Raju I. The Indian name Lakshmi, ending with a vowel. So you, know, you don't need any I addition, you merely add A G to make it female genitive. Lakshmi A. Krishna, even though it's a male name, it is ending with A. Here is Rara, 
getting with a female, whether it is a male or a female, as long the name is ending with a, we merely add a e to make it genetic. It may be masculine or it may be feminine. So now, some people used to think, oh, Krishna, we need to add I. No, no, no. You cannot add I because regardless, whether it's masculine or feminine, if it is an A ending name, you simply add E to make it A E. Radhe Krishna. Shiva, Shiva. Brahma, Brahme. So it's like that. So here is an English name, Anderson. Yen, just like Narasimhan. So you add I, Anderson. Then second I, Anderson, E I. Hukkam. Here is it. In Latin language, E or ending name is treated as a vowel for genitive purpose. See In nouns, in nouns, E or ending names are treated as vowel. So if E or ending name is treated as a vowel, as a single vowel, no stem augmentation is needed. So you merely add I to make it masculine genitive. Likewise, gamble, ending with E, you merely add I to make it male genitive. Now, William Jackson Hooker was the father. He didn't do any work in India, but he did a lot of work in, in Europe as well as in North America, uh, also South America. William Jackson Hooker and Joseph Dalton Hooker, father and son. If the species name is honoring both Hooker, we use the complete name. No stem extension is needed because ER is the stem ending to which we add over of plural masculine genetic. Adding a single I is male genetic. Adding Warham is the plural male genetic. There are two sisters, Lakshmi Patel and Meera Patel. Patel, the L ends in a consonant. So you need to extend the stuff, Pateli, by adding I. And you add here of plural female genetic. Warham for male, plural. Yerum for female proof. Hooker did not need the I addition, but Patel needed the I addition. Linnaeus, it's a Latin name. And in this case, to make it an epithet, first we find the genitive form. The genitive form is you remove US. <laughs> At add I, any I is form. So there, it is directly used as a epithet. There are several species named, named after Linnaeus as Linnaeus. This is the reason. So now, as I mentioned, why did Clark use Anthes as a masculine? Why did Clark use Corpus as feminine? Why J.D. Hooker? And Clark used varietal name as feminine in masculine species names and neuter species names because that was the convention at the past. So the code rules keep changing. And at that time, there was no code at all. So if you keep on holding, oh, I am correct, he was wrong. No, someone in the future may say, this person, what he did in December 2021 is wrong. So if I say what was done in 1890 was wrong, someone in 2050 may say what Dr. Gandhi did in 2021 is wrong. The concepts change. We think, so this is a famous quote. We think our father's poor. So wise we grow, but our wisest sons will definitely think that 
that we, the their fathers, that is we, as food. Now, unless you have expertise, you simply accept what is given in books. Anjali and Dira. Now, Andira is a, is a legume genus name, published from Brazil, and its common name is Angeline. Lamarck merely says the botanical name is Andira, and the Brazilian common name is Angeline. So everyone accepted that. For flora of North America, I wanted to know what angel it means. I thought, was it angel? Because it looks similar to the spelling of an angel. Does it look like an angel, magnificent, things like that? I wrote, then a few Bradley and botanists said, yes, it's a magnificent tree. So maybe that's why Lamarck, that's why it's the, the Portuguese name in the Brazil mean even a few Brazilian botanists thought so. Then an expert came, he said, no, Angelin is not a original Brazilian term. It came from Tamil and Malayala. Mike Hopkins, an expert, not only a botanist, but an expert in languages, he lives in Brazil. He said it came from Tamil and Malayala. How, how this happened? The Portuguese who were in Kerala and Goa. You know, Portuguese were the first Europeans in modern time to land in Kerala sometime in 1490s. They were there for some time, then they finally moved to Goa. So now, they saw the autocorpus Isutas tree being used for boat making. And the local people, they called it as Anjali, or Anjali, like folding your two hands together, forming something like a bowl or a boat, Anjali. In Hindu ceremony, when you, rule, when you do ablation in river, you take water and do your prayers, Anjali. So, since a boat, a small ship was made from this Wood of Autocorpus Hirsutas. The local common name was Anjali. And these Portuguese people, they learned that name Anjali. When they went to Brazil, when they used a legume tree for boat making, they gave the same Tamil Malayala name to that Brazilian tree. And that name became somehow established there as a common name. And Lamarck didn't know the history. He merely said, this is a Brazilian name, and he gave the legume genus name as Antira. So this knowledge was possible because there is an expert there was who informed me this thing. Otherwise, I would have continued to believe Anjali was a Brazilian name, not knowing that it's a Tamil Malayalam name that went to Brazil. In, 14, in 1500s. Tatura is a Sanskrit name Linnaeus used. Tatura, even though he knew quite well that the basis for this name is from India, he made a little twist and said the Latin term data means giver and the, this from this plant something is useful for some medical health purpose. So for that reason, he said he was using, he was giving the name Tektura. He slightly altered the Sanskrit name. The Tektura with a DH, he deleted the H and used Tektura and made a connection to data Latin. So for, so now, it's a legume genus name. And Sephora, something wise, something wisdom. It was a problem. 
what is wisdom to do with this genus name so for the legume then in 1737 he gave a, 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 a Yeah, an explanation in Latin and the English translation is given at the bottom. So now what is happening here is in the genus Sephora, the corolla and the stamen, they are of two different characters. So now The flower is partly looking like Cisalpinii and partly looking like Pebbly nut. The stamens looking like uh, Cisalpiniaceous corolla and the corolla looking like Pebbliniaceous. No. Not distinct stamens and Pebbliniaceous flower. This is wrong. I did, I did a mistake. It should have been Cisalpiniaceous. So here is a combination of two characters. Stamens resembling one group of legume and the corolla looking another group of legume. So if two different characters are there, where the particular genus should go? Should Sephora go to the Pebbliniaceous group or should Sephora go to Cisalpiniaceous group? And he was blaming the stamens for them because of the stamens, the confusion. So he called the stamens as wise men. You already know stamens are the male part. So he was using the term wise man. So for us, uh, has something like a pun, a pigeon pun, that is criticism. So unless one was able to go to Linnean work 1737 and make an analysis, one is not going to know the reason for the kinding of the genus name so far. I mentioned this. Look at the children sitting on the track. Why am I showing this picture? The reason is sometime in 1820s, an Englishman went to Chennai and he was his accommodation was along that marina beach and he saw a class of students sitting on the sand in in rows let me say there were 100 students in five rows of 20 each the teacher for the all the 100 students taught something yeah. then sat then went to sit on a chair and he took his nap Then one student from each row got up and went on talking to each student in his row. He, he saw the same thing happening in every row. He saw the same thing the second day, the third day and fourth day. And fifth day. Then he realized, although the teacher taught the same thing to all the hundred students, Not all the hunter students have the capacity to learn directly from the teacher. Whereas some students understand, learn very quickly from the teacher. And for some students, either they are afraid or they need a second explanation. And that individual selected student in each row, something similar to a monitor, was able to explain who understood quite well from the teacher, explained well to the other students. So other students were capable of learning from the monitor, but not so from the teacher. So this is what we call monitorial system. A teacher explaining and the monitor in turn explaining to his fellow students. He started this monitorial education system all over Europe and even in America till 1940 it was practiced. The whole thing started in South India, along the beach. Students sitting and learning on sand. Now, for the young people, I'm, I want you to think innovatively. Sometime in 1830s, one Frederick, Frederick Tudor 
he thought, why not export ice from America? He lived in a place very close to where I live, in Massachusetts. At that time, there was so much open space during winter time, there was so much ice on the ground. And people laughed, you want to export ice to India, you want to export ice to Australia all the way, it will just melt, there will be nothing left for you to sell. But he didn't, he persisted, he didn't give up. He sent shiploads of ice to India, to Australia, to South America, to all warm countries. Even though part of the ice melted, nearly about approximately 40 to 60 percent of the ice reached India and for the British people it was something like a cover to see, to use ice with their drinks. So this man said, was selling ice for more than 30 years. He was, he, the place where he lived was close to my place. At that time, people laughed at him, but he was a success, successful businessman. This is how, all the way from where I live, I live in this area, and he exported ice for, to South America and to India, Pakistan, part of China, to Australia. Now, about five, six years ago, there was a lot of python menace in a city in Florida. And the, ex the, the experts, they tried to catch all the pythons, but they were unsuccessful. Then this expert asked the city whether you could get some funding to bring in some people from South India to help, for help. The city agreed and gave him some money. And he brought a few people, you can see them here, from South India, who could hardly speak English. They didn't even go to high school. But they are snake experts, the, the Naga dynasty. And within a few weeks, they captured most of the pythons in that city. These experts, zoology people, who have PhD and who have been doing research, they were totally stunned. How these people, without even able to read and write in English, how they knew where the snakes live, what kind of information was in their head? It is not given in any textbook. It is in their head, which they inherited from their parents, which they could pass on. So sometimes, the inherited knowledge is much more than what is given in books. So this was a news item on TV and in newspapers. This is something, another very important thing. Striga. I was talking to Dr. Chavri yesterday. Yes, yes, many South Indian botanist students know this plant, Striga. In 1969, when I was an MSc student, I was, uh, I, I openly admit, I was very poor in plant taxonomy. <laughs> I was not interested. My interest was in plant, bio, plant physiology and biochemistry. But I need to pass in a plant taxonomy to get my degree. So I asked my fellow student who was exceedingly good. His name was Satya Narayana Acha. I asked him, what is the name of the plant? He said, the name of the plant is Striga. Which family? He said, Warabank KC. All right. I have decent memory. I remember Striga, Warabank KC. It went down. This person, is Richard Holmstein, a professor at the Washington University. He worked on the group called Scrapulary AC. And this person, I forget his name, he also worked on the parasitic members of uh, Asher AC. Uh, his name, second person is Claude Bimpapilis. Both published together and they dismantled what was once called Scrapulary AC into many families. 
and according to the Striga plum to Warabank KC. Now, why am I telling this example? In 1969, my fellow classmate Satya Narayana Acha told the family name is Warabank KC. I accepted it. Then later on, in the project I worked, I did the family scrap literacy. My fellow co-worker did the family water bank casey and Striga was included in scrap literacy. So now I was confused. I remember Mr. Achar telling me Striga was in water bank casey. Why every book said Striga if it's scrap literacy? I checked all the books available for me. Every book said Striga is scrap okay. I got confused. But after the embassy program, I, I hardly saw Mr. Achar. I never asked, asked him the question. I came to this country in 1982. Again, the question turned to the army. I checked all the available books. Every book said Striga is its scrap lineage. Then comes the research by two families and Richard. In late 1990s and in 2001, they published their work wherein removing Striga from Stroplery AC and putting it in the water bank. Anyway, until their work in 1999, no single book said Striga is in water bank. Every book said it is in Stroplery AC. But what made them a student in MIC class to tell me it was in water bank? He is no more, so I couldn't ask him. He is not alive. So now, when I told this story to some people, Dr. Professor Brennan in Germany, Hanno Schaffer in Germany, Richard, the person who worked on that group in 1999, Robert Knox, a botanist, New York botanical daughter, Janet Salim, a fellow Florida of North America editor, they are all stunned. How this could have happened? What made him to guess the family name was Warabank Casey in 69 when the rest of the world said it is crop literacy? So now one person said maybe he came from another planet. <laughs> this is what said. He came from another planet. He had higher higher level of intelligence than we do. This is an appreciation for an Indian. So, <laughs> I become a little emotional whenever an Indian is appreciated. I tell this story so that the young students, you should try to think innovatively. You may be what you think may be right or may be wrong. But you should not be simply doing what the world of scientists did. If everyone keep on doing what the previous people did, there won't be any innovation, any innovative thinking. Bentham and Hooker gave a classification. Engler and Prantl gave a classification. Arthur Cronquist gave a classification. Taktajan gave a Arman, Taktajan gave a classification. There are so many plant classifications. Linnaeus gave a classification. But all those are gone now and presently most of us use what you call APG4 system. And the APG4 system is maintained by the contribution of hundreds of botanists at Missouri Botanical Garden by Professor Peter Stevens. But anyway, as the new flood comes, the old flood is washed out, it's, it, it moves out, things are changing. So I am telling this story how an Indian student made an innovative thinking in 1969 and the rest of the world didn't even think about it. So like that, think, try to think innovatively. You may be proved correct or you may not be, but doesn't matter. I 
area should come and you should also try to be efficient. Linnaeus became quite popular only after 1750s. Prior to that, he was not that great, that, that well known. Only in some small academic world, in his time, he was not known, he was known, but not to the entire botanical community. He was a medical doctor. He got his medical degree in two weeks. You may be surprised. In two weeks, he was from Sweden. He went to Netherlands. He went to the university in Netherlands. And he showed what he had already published. In those days, to get a medical degree, all you have to do is publish, mention something about the plant and their uses. Since Linnaeus has already done it, they said there was nothing they could teach him. And they gave him a degree. The only thing we do not know is whether Linnaeus spent one week or two weeks in the university. Anyway, within two weeks, he got his MD, Doctor of Medicine degree, and he left. Anyway, he wanted to go to, before returning to Sweden, he wanted to go to Paris and meet with Jesu brothers, famous botanist at that time. So, already information was sent to the Paris Garden that Linnaeus was going to meet them. When Linnaeus went to the garden, Jesu was giving a demonstration to a group of local people about different plants growing in the garden. So when Linnaeus saw that, he didn't want to disturb Jesu. He also stood behind other people. Then on a particular plant, Jesu was uncertain. He didn't know what it was. Totally it was a new plant. Usually before giving a demonstration, you should know what plants you are going to talk about. And that particular plant, he didn't pay attention. Suddenly he was hesitating. He didn't know what it was. After a few minutes, Linnaeus said in Latin, that plant of facium americanum habit. It has the appearance of an American plant. Immediately, Jesu turned to see who the person was. They never met before. But Jesu was smart enough to think this kind of information can come only from a reputed botanist. He said, are you Linnaeus? He said, yes, I was. So again, I'm, I told this story so that the youngsters Whatever you do, regardless of your subject, whether you continue in botany or biochemistry or physics, doesn't matter. As I said, try to become acquired like one of the engineering students who talked about phytomining. And Linnaeus, even without seeing his, his name was recognized and just could recognize him, you should develop that kind of efficiency so that you get well respected. That's the story. This is as a gray, I'm mentioning the name mm -hmm. because it mm -hmm. mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. instrumental mm -hmm. in spreading mm -hmm. Darwinism in America. Mm -hmm. Welcome uh, another famous uh, botanist mm -hmm. Britain mm -hmm. in New York Botanical Garden. He was the instrumental person for the type concept. Without this concept, we will not be having the type concept at all. He was the one who was adamant. Every name must be linked to a type. Arthur Cronquist, the famous American botanist in 1960s and 70s, and Armand Tatsajan, the famous then Soviet Russian botanist, and Cronquist in a meeting, and two botanists, Patricia Holmgren and Doyle Holmgren, again American botanist. I am a nomenclature editor for Flora of North America and he is James Jarucci with all with the executive editing editor of the Flora of North America. Nicholas Terland, the present chief editor of the plan code, another important member of the code. Now, this is 
my daughter at the age four. Presently, she is a medical doctor, and here is a famous person. In 1950s, he was a founding member of the botanical board. Founding member when the code was established. 1950, Rajat Makwa. He came to my daughter's birthday, and now Wendy Applequist, the chairman of the National Plant Committee. Father Saldana, who gave me an opportunity to learn plant taxonomy, James Reveal, my fellow American botanist who passed away. This person lived hundred plus. Bill William Weber, he was quite active, even till hundred. In when he was in his eighties, he called me on the phone. I didn't know. I knew the William, name William Weber. On the phone, he said, "Namaste, Mahatma Gandhi." Hmm. I was startled. Who is it? This is he said. This is William Weber. Immediately, I knew who it was. We never met. Then I said, "I am not Mahatma Gandhi. I am small Atma Gandhi, <laughs> little Atma. I am not a Mahatma." <laughs> he laughed. He asked a normal question. Posting, I asked. I answered. There it ended. He respected Indians quite well. My award, anyway. The question: Does it matter where a species is placed? Does it matter whether tomato is called Lycopersicum esculentum or Solanum Lycopersicum? In India, people may be still learning as Lycopersicum esculenta, but in European and American countries, they are learning it as Solanum Lycopersicum. If a person is named Ishwara, and if he is renamed as Krishna. That's the internal and external characters of the person. Characters, original character. Do they disappear? Do they change? Maybe instead of three lines, we put it on the forehead. There may be a single nama as a Vaishnavite versus Shaivite, but that is totally extra, extra, external character. But Original, external character, and to, to the change. The reason I am asking, I am mentioning is, in one course, one student asked me, why we need to bother all these Latin grammar and Greek grammar? Just because a tree has a feminine name or a neuter name, do the physiological, psychological, anatomical characters change? They remain the same. Why bother to studying all these? Good question, but the my answer was why men and women have different kind pattern format of names. Why they dress differently, and what if the plants are called by different names in different countries? Like take banana, there may be hundred names for banana in different country. How they can communicate? So no, there need to be. Yes, standardized name, and we need to use the Latin and gra Greek grammar. The student might have convinced or not convinced. Anyway, we need to use standardized plant names. Anyway, this is the book that I usually recommend for people to learn. So much. So now, whatever I talk, it's all only the basic. It is not anything in detail. So now, so now, if the, if there is any any question, I can answer. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's yes, great, sir. Sir, yes, sir. Come late. Okay. Sir. Yes. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, my can question is uh, <clears throat> that uh, recently you uh, made us that Barleria uh, pratensis is recently uh, renamed as uh, corrected as Barleria pratiana. Yeah. Likewise. In Cirrhopegia, there are two names. Cirrhopegia manohari, okay, uh, which was published from Kerala. 
Okay. And it was uh, named, assuming it is beautiful, and uh, the Malayalam adjective that is manoharam. So right. manoharam used to uh, coin this specific epithet. And the now ending of the name or epithet is like a person's name. That is, it ends with double I or genitive. Uh, so that we right, can yes. think that it is a manohar name. So whether it so can now, be corrected now, this is my question. So now, it depends upon, uh, so now I need to see the original again. It depends upon what the author meant. Whether they meant only the beauty of the plant or if yes. they want to honor the person. These are the two ah. different issues. So if they say, we want to honor the person. Yes, it needs to be corrected. Uh, if they are saying, you know, we are just giving the view, we are, they are focusing on the beauty. So then we cannot alter. Okay. So what I'm emphasizing is what the author intended. So it is not a straightforward correction. Yes, sir. Uh, so so I in, the publication, uh, in the publication, they have told that in the etymology. That based on that manoharam, that beauty, beautiful uh, flower, then they are naming it as manohari. Right. So, okay, sir. Again, as I said, I need to see the original sure. to make sure. Yes, sir. Yes. I will send, sir. Will well, listen. Thank you, sir. It was nice okay. to see you and nice to listen to your talk as well. Any more questions? Please ask. Sir, there is a question in the chat box. Sir, hello. Uh, you, you told about the nomenclature of Pongamia pinnata to Malaysia pinnata. Right. So, right. I think uh, Harishita, she was uh, somewhat confused regarding that, regarding that. Which is the correct name? Right. Pongamia pinnata Shana. or Malaysia pinnata? So now, according to the code, Pongamia is a conserved name. And the code made it at starting date 1763. Militia from 1834, it is also a conserved name. It depends upon the taxonomy. If you are recognizing Pongamia and Militia separately, no problem. Okay. You keep you keep using Pongamia and you keep using Militia. But if you bring them together, then the court says, well, even the Pongamia has priority from 1763 and Militia only from 1834, Pongamia is not the correct name here, Militia is. Okay. So if you are recognizing one genus, Militia is the correct name. If you are recognizing two genera, then both are correct names. Okay. It is left to you. Code will not say who is correct and who is wrong. It is up to you to make a decision. Thank you, sir. I request participants to ask questions if you have. I keep, I keep repeating one thing. Yes. Always think in your mind. Whenever you look at compound terms, compound terms, flat names or any, see how they got joined together. Like, for example, open compound words like ice cream, and the first compound word. Likewise, gossipy, polia. All these words are made. First thing that should be in your mind is find the genetic form of the first term. Genetic form. Well, finding the genetic form of the second term is very rare. I gave you that example of style of scientist. That's very rare. Usually the genetic form of the first term. Find it. Then use the stem of the genitive form 
and add it to the second term. Our second term may be a full word or it may be a suffix. What is a suffix? Prefix, suffix, like composite. In composite, com is a prefix. Suffix AC is a pre suffix. Always put at the end. AC. So, before you do that, adding a suffix or a second word, find the stem of the first word. And for that, find the genitive form of that word. So, for why it is the genitive form is, why it is it some? For caparis, it's a debate. Is it caparis or caparides? Then code comes for our help. He says, no, for caparis, it is caparis itself is the genitive form. For why it is, there is no problem. Why it is, there is no controversy. But for caparis, there is controversy. Some people are unhappy. They do not want to accept caparis, but we need to go with the majority. Same thing happened with the cannabis. Some people cannot be desi, cannot be nasi. So I believe long time ago, I also use cannabinase, but after that, no, the court says cannabis. We just accept and move on. There is no point in arguing because opinions can always differ. You go with the majority. Of course, what is majority you now may change in future. Still, you agree with that majority at that time. You simply have to agree and move on. So, I keep it for young people. Look at all the compound words that you use in your writing. Any compound. See how they got formed. That will make you really knowledgeable. Uh, and don't forget. Cartilidum literally means cavity. Cavity literally means dicotyledon, two cavity, single cotyledon, as a monocotyledon, single cavity, literal meaning, a cotyledon. So if the doctor says, you don't have cavity, you mean a cotyledon, <laughs> the dentist may get confused, but you know, a cotyledon without cavity. Okay. So I think uh, our principal, Sanjay Marathi sir, has raised his hand. Sir, do you want to? Yes, sir. Uh, well, I just uh, say very good lecture and very good presentation, sir. Uh, on the half of our college, uh, we hear you very deep study of your uh, plant nomenclature. So I just uh, give uh, thank you for. Uh, uh, your lecture, I just I will uh, say that uh, wrongly, I will raise the hand. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. And yes. thank you for arranging it because knowledge need to be shared. Knowledge yes. need to be shared. Yes, sir. Yes. And so now uh, it cannot be given to anyone. One yes. can be, one can keep talking, but if the people are interested, they can learn. Otherwise, knowledge cannot be given to anyone. It's not money. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Another Srijan Mukhopadhyaya. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Good evening, sir. I'm Srijan Mukhopadhyaya. I'm from uh, UG student at Sirampur College, West Bengal. I had a question okay. regarding the genus Epnus not being placed in Ebenus. It is placed in Fabrici. There was some confusion with Ebenus being a synonym for diospiders. I wish to clear that out, sir. Oh. So, no. Did he say it is in, some people put it in Fabaxi? Yes, but the name Ebenus is actually placed under Fabaxi. If I'm not wrong, I wish to clarify this actually, sir. Oh, no. One minute, so now just make, I want to check something. One minute. Yeah, So 
Sono. This is the. Uh, that's what I guessed. You see, you remember in my talk I mentioned about homo names? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So there are two generic names. There are two genera with the same name, Ebinus. One is a legume, another is in the Ebinacy. So it is not that the Ebinacy taxon was put in Fabes. 